A Spider-Man suit can have a lot of different options, especially if you've never ordered one before. I can speak from experience saying that the first time going on those sites to order a Spider-Man suit, you're kind of overwhelmed with how much there actually is. Like, how much can actually go into a spandex onesie? Well, you actually would kind of be surprised. There's a lot of different options that can go into your particular Spider-Man costume to fit every cosplayer's preferences. But what do all those options mean? What if I pick the wrong option? What if I pick an option I don't want? What if I pick an option I don't even know what it is? That's why I'm here. I got you. What up? My name is Miles, and I am in no way a professional Spider-Man cosplayer, but I've done it enough to the point where I've made all the mistakes, and I can tell you from a lot of experience what all the options are. That was a terrible intro. Hey, what up? My name is Miles. I'm a cosplayer and artist, and I do a lot of Spider-Man cosplays, and today I'm going to try my best to explain, break down, and kind of give a bit of a guide into every one of those options that goes into a Spider-Man suit. Now, a quick disclaimer, I am in no way a professional in any of this. I've said that a million times and my audience does know if anyone's a professional, it's not me. I've said many times that I'm unprofessionally a professional or professionally unprofessional, whatever that means. I don't know everything 100%. There's guaranteed to be somebody out there who knows a little bit more than I do. And if they do, I encourage you to listen to them as well. I've had enough Spider-Man suits over my time and enough experience with these suits and ordering these suits to try to give you as much of a helping hand as I possibly can when ordering a suit and trying to break down all of those options. So if it's your first time ordering a Spider-Man suit, or maybe it's not your first time, but you don't know what all of those options mean, then hopefully I can help you by the end of this video to give you a little bit of a better sense of when you're going in to order a suit. With all that out of the way, let's get to it. So a couple of days ago on my Instagram community page or the channels tab, whatever it's called, I, I like to call it a community page. A couple of days ago, I threw a poll up asking people what video they wanted to see when the next chance I had to make a video was and by a landslide, this video won. It was either this or explaining the difference between gloves and wrist zippers. And in all honesty, this video is more entertaining anyway, and I have a lot more information that I can give. Plus, it would be kind of redundant to make that video, but I might do it in the future if someone really wants a video on that. By the way, if you're not a part of the Instagram community or channels tab, you definitely should be because you have the power to then vote for possible videos in the future like this, give recommendations, and just participate with the rest of the community, and you get to see some behind the scenes stuff a little bit earlier than everybody else. And while you're over there, you might as well follow the Instagram because we're almost at 10K, that'd be pretty cool. Anyway, you guys all voted for explaining every single option on a Spider-Man suit. So that's what I'm gonna try to do today. I looked at almost every Spider-Man print shop that I know of, and the first thing that I discovered was they're not all the same with their options. So that provided a bit of a challenge. All of the print shops have different ways that they explain their options. They have different categories, they have different names for the same exact option, and some don't offer all of the options. So what I did is I wrote down every single option I possibly could from every single trusted site that I could find, and I'm going to try to explain as many as I can. So if you're on one of those websites and it refers to an option a little bit differently than the wording I use, it's not necessarily a different option, it's just a different way that they chose to phrase it. But you can apply this to pretty much any print shop that has these options, like Print Costume, Hero Stime, RPC, or Sim Cosplay. All those guys, you can apply these same things to it. So let's start with the options. First and foremost, the actual suit itself. That was graceful. Spider-Man suits are made of a material called spandex lycra. It is a four-way stretch fabric that stretches, of course, four ways. They all kind of look like this. They drape down and they look a little bit small, but that's because they are meant to expand onto your body when you put them on. You're supposed to order a Spider-Man suit to be to your size, but a little bit tighter so that you don't have any loose parts. How did it get stuck in my chair? Spider-Man suits will all have different prints on them based on the design that you actually get. But for the most part, they all should be made out of that Lycra spandex. That's the most commonly used fabric for any Spider-Man suit. Now, when you get to your site, it may offer you two different options for the fabric that you can get. The standard or the upgraded. Now, let's say upgraded fabric. They could say super ultra thick Lycra. They, they can phrase it and name it whatever they want. But the idea is that there's two qualities of fabric. One that's pretty much the standard and another one that's a little bit upgraded, a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier. The example I give for this are these two suits. This Into the Spider-Verse Miles suit is with normal Lycra. It is the standard option. This Amazing Spider-Man 2 suit is with ultra thick Lycra. Feeling them, I can tell you this one's a little bit thicker. It's probably like one and a half times thicker, maybe two times thicker. It is a lot thicker when you're wearing it. You're a little bit warmer wearing this one and it's a bit heavier. The fabric itself has a little bit more weight to it. While this one is a little bit more light, 
it's more free and you can breathe a little bit more in it. In terms of which fabric you want to get, obviously I have both and I wear both and both are pretty good and they both held up for a pretty long time. It depends on your budget, how you want the suit to look, and how you want the suit to last up. I can tell you that the Amazing Spider-Man 2 suit, while I have kind of taken it through the ringer and kind of damaged it over the years, it has lasted the longest out of all of my suits because it's the best quality fabric. But if you don't have the budget or just don't want the extra quality fabric, there's not really a detriment to getting the normal fabric. It's completely fine. Don't think that just because you get the standard fabric, it's not gonna be a good suit. Most of my suits are in the standard fabric. This is the only suit that I own that is in the ultra thick lycra or the upgraded fabric. Some sites might offer some additional layering on top of the fabric, like screen printing, puff painting, or 3D textures. Now, it very heavily depends on your site. Some don't offer it at all. Some incorporate it into all of their suits and that's why they're more expensive. And some offer it as an option. What the options actually mean is it's essentially taking a Spider-Man suit like this and it's adding on a second kind of thinner layer on top of it, making more of a layered effect. This could be in a number of different ways. If you get screen printing, screen printing kind of applies to a larger area. On this suit, I have the symbol screen printed and you can see that it has a bit of a shine to it that the rest of the suit doesn't have. That's because it's physically a layer on top of the actual suit. If you get the option called like puff paint or raised webbing, something like that, it essentially takes the webbing pattern of whatever suit you have and raises it up a little bit. Very reminiscent of both the Amazing Spider-Man 2 suit and the Tobey Maguire suit. It's essentially just a 3D webbing that pops out maybe like, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, however the suit calls for it. A lot of people really like the raised webbing effect and I personally do myself, but I don't have any suits that actually have it, so I can't show you. But it's essentially just a raised webbed effect off of the actual suit. So you're not just wearing a skin tight suit, it raises up a little bit. Lastly, for the actual suit itself, before we get into the different attachments, we have the sizing option. And that's probably the most important trait of any Spider-Man suit. And I actually discovered not every site offers custom sizing, and that is a big deal breaker for me. Custom sizing is essentially when you measure different parts of your body, like your chest, your shoulder width, your arm width, your arm length, your neck circumference, your head circumference, your waist. When you measure all of those things and then you input them into the site, they can then take those measurements, apply them into their print file, send it through the printer, and it will print the suit exactly to your size. Some sites don't offer that and they just have small, medium, large, extra large, and I think that's a really dumb idea. If it works for you, that's great, but that's not personally how I like to order my suits, but I'm picky. I like to have my suits fit a certain way. I like to have them look a certain way. So I always do custom sizing. If you need tips on how to size your Spider-Man suit correctly, I have a video explaining the entire process of how to order a Spider-Man suit. And it goes through how to measure every single option that they give. But if you have the option between custom sizing and preset sizing, I would always recommend custom sizing because then you can ensure the suit will fit to you and it won't have like the frog arm effect. It won't have loose fabric. It won't have drapey fabric. It will look the best that it can on the measurement you give. Moving on from the actual suit, now we have all of these zipper options. So the zipper options is a big one that confuses people because they never know where they should get the zippers on their suit. I can tell you again, Again, from experience, I've gotten almost all of the zipper options. And based on the way the zippers are sewn in, I can kind of imagine how the other ones would work. The main option is the back zipper, the one that, of course, is on your back. How you step into the Spider-Man suit, put it on, and then zip it up so that it compresses on. That always has two separate options. First one being a normal vertical shaped zipper like this. So this is the back of the suit. You can zip it down vertically, step into it, and then when you're ready to go, And when you're ready to go, you can zip it right back up. It's very hard to do it like that. You can zip it right back up. That was graceful. The second option is called an invisible U-zip. So what this does is this is again the back of the suit, but it takes the zipper and it goes armpit to armpit and it goes all the way down to the back of your waist and back around. So essentially when you're putting this suit on, you have to go under this, put your legs in there and then put this on like a baby's bib, loop it over and then you zip it around around your back. I can't do this one like this because it requires a lot more tension and pressure. Now, between those two options, I personally prefer to have the invisible use it. I think it looks a little bit nicer, it fits and feels a little bit nicer, and it helps the suit compress in the right areas it needs to. However, dependent on your suit design, you might find that it's more beneficial to have the vertical zip. I know, for example, like Spider-Gwen, it's more beneficial to have the vertical zip because there's no direct symbol on the back that it would be cutting through and it actually fits in with her design a lot better not to have this, because this would cut through the arm design. But for all of the designs I use, like the Amazing Spider-Man 2, I wouldn't want this symbol in the back, especially if it's screen printed, to get cut. Now, I do have one suit that is a vertical zip that does cut through the symbol a little bit, 
but as you can see, it's not super noticeable. So if you're really worried about it cutting through the symbol, it'll look something like this. And when you obviously unzip it, it'll cut through the design on the back and the symbol, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. It just is dependent on the suit design you have and what's gonna flow the best in that suit. Next are the calf and ankle zippers. I've never gotten these before. These zippers are of course personal preference, but I think kind of fit more into the, I don't wanna say useless, but I don't find a use with them to have a zipper down by the foot. The calf zipper would obviously have a zip going right down the side of your calf. I think they have it on the inside of your calf. So if these are your legs and you're facing forward, the zipper would be here and here on the inside of your leg on the calf. And then the ankle zippers would apply the exact same way. It would be on the inside of your ankle that goes down to the foot. I personally, again, don't think that these are really necessary options. I think that they might actually get in the way, especially the ankle zippers. But again, I've never had these options. So, so I can't personally say if they're good or bad. I can say that I probably wouldn't ever get a suit with them because I don't see a purpose for having them there. Next one is the big one people ask about a lot, the wrist and forearm zippers. What this one does is when you put your arm in your Spider-Man suit, you will have a zipper going from your wrist all the way here to your elbow. And it will be on the inside right there, just like this. And you would just have to zip the zipper up to complete the suit and close it. Now, the benefits of having a wrist zipper is if your suit is completely on, but you need access to your hand, you can very easily slide your hand out through the wrist zipper like that without taking the entire suit off. And then you can very easily pop it back in, zip it up and you're good to go. Now, it's a really good perk, but one of the downsides of having wrist zippers is you kind of need a little bit of help to put them on. Some people can do them themselves if you like really take your time to do it. But if I'm ever wanting to shoot with someone who has wrist zippers, oftentimes it's the safest bet to help them put them on. Another detriment of them is unfortunately, these zippers have a high tendency to bust open. There's not a lot of pressure that's actually holding these zippers on and they kind of just have a tendency to bust open. You can see actually here on the wrist, there's a rip right above the zipper from just the wear and tear of putting the zipper up and down. Now that can obviously come down to the fact that I'm not super like neat or fluent when I put my suits on. I personally know someone who has wrist zippers and hers have not busted yet because she's a lot more careful than I am. So if you want the wrist zippers, I'm not saying that they're going to bust, but of all the zippers, they do have kind of a higher tendency to be the first ones to break. You can get the damn glove on, man. Well, the fingers are the worst part, to be honest. Now, the second alternative to wrist zippers would be attached gloves. Now, excuse me, because I did not fully unhook those fingers. They're still kind of stubby, but I just wanted to show you the actual wrist. The alternative to the wrist zippers is not having a zipper on at all and just having the glove attached on. The benefit of this is there's nothing to break here. There's no bust on the wrist zipper, but once you put the suit on, you're kind of committed to wearing the suit. The only way to get access to your hands again is to take your entire arm off. I've noticed that when I'm wearing a suit, I am able to still use my phone, just kind of limited. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but if you do kind of want access to your hands and you're worried about that, then get the wrist zipper. But not having it is not the biggest deal in the world. The third option for the gloves and wrist zippers is getting detached gloves like this, where you get a separate pair of gloves that goes all the way up to about your bicep area and is completely separate from the suit. The suit itself has no glove attached to it whatsoever. It just goes like a long sleeve shirt and it stops at your wrist. So I have a suit with every single one of these options. And personally, I can tell you that I don't really know which one I like the best. I think off the top of my head, I would say I like the detached glove the most because I'm able to slide the glove on and off as a separate piece. And if they break like these ones have and I've had to sew them back together, my entire suit isn't busted. I can just replace the glove or try to fix the glove in isolation. I think my least favorite one would be the attached glove because you're very limited. However, it does look the cleanest. The wrist zipper kind of falls somewhere in the middle for me because I enjoy having that wrist zipper, but again, they have a higher tendency to break open. Like my Miles Morales suit here, the wrist zippers are permanently broken open and I can't close them. Again, that's my own fault. That's not the suit's fault. That's just me being an idiot. So I always have to wear this suit with the hoodie design. I can't ever wear this suit just as it is. There's not really a bad option. It's personally just up to you and how you want your suit to look. There are two more zipper options on the suit and they involve the mask and neck area. Those two being the actual mask zipper and the neck zipper. The neck zipper is a zipper that starts at the bottom of the shoulder blades and goes all the way up to the top of the suit right there. And it zips up and down. I also have a neck zipper on this suit, but I personally have never used it. If you get the vertical zipper, I'm pretty sure that the neck zipper is just included all the way around. I highly doubt that it would just be attached like this and it would be like a hole, but I can't say for sure. So where a neck zipper would be kind of beneficial is if you want the neck to be a little bit tighter, that's where the neck zipper comes in is you can slide your head in without expanding the suit and then you can compress the suit back together with the zipper and it will kind of hug your neck a little bit more. If you don't have a neck zipper, you're just going to pop your head in and out of the suit 
and the neck will compress the best that it can. Again, I think this one's up to personal preference. Me personally, I would not choose to have a neck zipper. I think the next suit I get is not gonna have one. Actually, I think the one, yeah, this one doesn't even have a neck zipper. The one that I actually ordered a couple months ago doesn't have a neck zipper whatsoever and it still compresses to my neck pretty well. But if you do find it necessary and you do want it, it's not the worst thing in the world to have it. It's not a detriment, it might actually help you. Again, I have three suits that have a neck zipper. I just don't use it. The second option is the mask zipper. So all of my masks look like this. They look very scary, they don't have eyes in them whatsoever. But the back of them has a zipper that goes down to the neck and you can zip it up and it opens the back for you to slide it onto your head. And then once it's on your head, you can zip it back closed. All of my masks, have a mask zipper to them. This one has a mask zipper. All the ones I wear have a mask zipper. Sometimes I will use the mask zipper. I'll zip it up just a little bit, put the mask on and then zip it back closed. Sometimes I don't even use it. I just keep it zipped down all the way like I do with this one and I'll just pop the mask on. Again, I think it's up to personal preference if you want a mask zipper, but with or without the mask zipper, it's not going to change the overall look of your suit. And if let's say somebody can tell, it's not the worst thing in the world because no one's gonna be staring at the back of your head when you're wearing a Spider-Man suit. That's not where all of your photos or your videos are gonna be kind of angled. You're gonna be facing the camera. So while we're talking about the mask, let's move on to those options. And the mask options are some of the more important ones on how you want your mask to actually look and feel in the suit. The first option is to get an attached mask. What that is, is it takes the bottom of the mask like this and it attaches it, it sews it on to the top of the neck like this. So it is all one piece. So if you wanna take the mask off, you're gonna take it off and it's gonna hang like this and it's gonna still be a part of the suit. I don't have this on any suit design I own. I don't like the idea of having the mask and the suit be one piece. I think it restricts your movement. If you turn your head, you can see the entire suit start to crease and bend and you can't really interchange masks. Just yesterday, I filmed a video with the symbiote Spider-Man suit and I put my amazing Spider-Man lenses on it. I just used my Miles mask and the amazing Spider-Man lenses. If I had attached masks, I wouldn't be able to do that. So if you click the attached mask, you can expect to have an entire suit with the mask attached and you have to slide it over like that to get it in. The alternative to that would be the detached mask, which is what I get every single time. That's what I'm wearing right now. That's how I'm able to wear this mask without a suit because it's not attached. I think it looks a little bit nicer and it fits the character a little bit more. Some people like to do unmasked photos or unmasked cosplays. And if you have an attached mask, you can't really do that. Now, the one benefit of having an attached mask is you don't have to have the risk of the suit not lining up, the crease is not lining up, or maybe your suit does something like this and you have the ugly inside of the suit showing. But a lot of times with the detached mask, my photographer or cosplay friend will just tell me to tuck in the mask and we're good to go. The mask zipper, we already went over that, but another option that people do often get confused about is an option called open eye holes. Let me show you what the open eye hole means. That guy, hello. The open eye holes essentially gives you a blank mask like this. It has these two little eye holes cut out right here on the mask. So you might be wondering, why would you get an option like this? This doesn't look like a Spider-Man suit at all. Well, that's because a Spider-Man mask is a little bit more than one piece. It's not just a single mask they put on like in the movies. It actually has like three pieces to it. The actual fabric mask, the face shell inside, and the lenses. This is a face shell. It is a Spider-Man face shell. It is a hard plastic shell that you wear on your face, that you put the mask over, line up the eye holes, and then you take the corresponding lenses and you attach them on like that. That's how all of my masks work. All the ones I wear, even Miles Morales, has a face show with magnetic lenses and they have the open eye holes in the mask. Now, the alternative to this, if you don't want a face shell and you don't want those open eye holes looking all weird, the alternative option is to get something called attached lenses. Now, what that is, is it takes the mask and your lens that would have gone with the face show, and it basically just sews the lens on to the mask. So you'll have something that looks kind of like this. It'll be a loose mask with lenses that you can slide over your face without a face shell. If you want some more details on what a face shell actually is and kind of breaking that down, I have that video there of the ultimate guide into face shells. I'm probably gonna remake that video at some point because I don't like the quality of that one, but that goes a lot more into depth than I will in this video. Overall, essentially, I know it seems like there's a lot of different options for those masks, but it really breaks down into two separate options. If you want a face shell or if you don't. And that's completely up to personal preference. Not everybody wants a face shell. Not everybody needs a face shell. Not everybody 
has the budget for a face shell and I get that. If you don't want, need, or have the ability to get a face shell, then just get attached lenses and throw it on. You know, it works. If you want the face shell, then you would have to get the open eye holes and then the face shell with magnetic lenses. Again, it's all up to personal preference. Me personally, I prefer to have a face shell with magnetic lenses. That's how all of my suits work because I like to have the character specific suits and I personally enjoy the look of a face shell more than just a compressed mask on my face. But again, to each their own, own personal preference, you do you. I'm not here to tell you which options to get, I'm just here to explain what the options are. Now, if you are somebody who does want a face shell and you're wondering where to get them, most print shops do offer a standard face shell. They normally stick to a more generic shape, they don't really have more specialty character designs. They're not gonna have like the Amazing Spider-Man 2 shape and lenses. They're not gonna have like the 2099 Miguel O'Hara shape and lenses. They're not gonna have like the Spider-Verse mile shape and lenses. If you want one of those, those specialty face shells, you'd have to go somewhere like Instagram to find a face shell vendor or Etsy to find a face shell vendor. Or if you want to make your own face shell, I have that video showing you how to make your own out of nothing but a cereal box and hot glue. Moving back over to the suit, we have one last option that is the bottom of the suit. The feet, the shoes. What does Spider-Man wear for shoes and what options should you get? So to my knowledge, there are three separate options that you can get. You can get nothing on the shoes, which is where you essentially just get an attached sock. So this is your suit and there's nothing really on the feet. It's just, it's just loose feet that you slide in. It's just like a onesie. Now this design doesn't have any sort of shoe to it. And you might wonder why is that helpful? Well, it's helpful for designs that wear external shoes like my Miles Morales or my Spider-Punk design. With Miles Morales into the Spider-Verse, I have to wear the Chicago ones, even though I wear fake ones and people roast me for it all the time. And for Spider-Punk, I would wear the red chucks or Converse that go over the shoe. If I have shoes installed in the suit, I can't really do that. So that's where it's beneficial to get nothing on the shoes, is if you know you're going to wear a shoe on top of it. A lot of Gwen cosplayers do this as well, so that they can wear the ballerina slippers on top of the shoe without having the soles on the inside. The second option is to get attached soles. That essentially does this. It takes the bottom of the shoe and it adds on the bottom of a gym shoe. This essentially is just the bottom of a gym shoe ripped off and then re-glued onto the bottom of your suit. This is if you only get the sole design, which I have learned the hard way is not the right option to get. What you actually have to do is get both options. You have to get the sole on the bottom and the Kung Fu shoe on the inside. If you don't know what that is, I got you. So it's not gonna be easy to see because of the suit is together but the Kung Fu shoe on the inside essentially has a thick Kung Fu sock on the inside of the shoe that's attached to the sole on the bottom. So what this does is when you slide your leg into the suit, you can essentially slide your foot into the sock on the inside separately, and then it attaches to your foot and you can put the rest of the suit on so that your foot is completely secure on the inside because there's literally like a sock on the inside of here, like that, let me see if I can grab it. There's literally like a sock on the inside of here that compresses down to your foot that holds it together. When I ordered this suit, I made the mistake of not getting the Kung Fu shoe on the inside. So there's literally nothing. It's just my foot sitting on a sole and there's nothing holding my foot to the actual shoe. So that was a struggle. So between your three options, you could get nothing and wear an external shoe on top. You could get the soles, but without having the Kung Fu shoe on the inside, it kind of loses structure and stability and you don't really have ankles for the day. Or you could get both, which is what I highly recommend so that you can wear a normal Spider-Man suit outside and not have to wear shoes over it. I did also see a fourth option of no feet whatsoever. And I would assume what that does is it cuts the feet off at the ankle like this does for the wrist. The only reason I could think someone would do that is again, if you're doing a design like this and you wanna wear shoes, but you don't wanna wear the foot all the way and you wanna have access to your foot, that's where it would come in handy but I've never gotten that option on a suit. When I'm wearing a Spider-Man suit, I like to have the foot go all the way through. I think that's all the design options for the physical suit itself. I think if I missed something, please leave a comment and I'll get back to it and I will reply with my best knowledge and best response that I can to try to clear things up. There are two more things that I wanna go over. Some sites offer the option to order the digital print file with your suit. What does this mean? What does ordering the digital print file with your suit mean? Essentially what that means is every single suit before it's actually a suit is a pattern. Somebody has to actually design and make the pattern for it to be printed on a suit. Clicking this option essentially orders the digital design. Now, I think there's a misconception with this option and I don't know for sure because I can't confirm it. What I initially said was you don't need to do this because you're already getting the suit, you don't need to have the digital version. But from what I have been told and what I've looked up, what this does is actually pays the person 
who designed the suit. So the person who designed the actual suit pattern, if you click this option, they will get the commission fee for designing the suit. Don't take my word for that. Take it with a grain of salt because I don't know for sure. That's what I've been told that that option means. Again, I don't personally know for sure. I can't tell you for sure, but I can tell you that if you're worried about getting your suit, this option does not determine whether or not you will get your suit. If you order a suit, whether or not you click this option, you will still get your suit. The second thing that I wanna bring up is custom suit designs. Some sites offer the ability to upload your own custom design. What this means is that if the print shop does not have the suit design that you want or need, you can upload a suit pattern from a suit maker. So remember how we talked about those suit designs and how the artist makes the suit design and it gets uploaded to the print shop. If the print shop doesn't have that particular design that you need, you can purchase it from the designer directly and then upload it in. That's what I did with my Spider-Punk suit. Print Costume didn't have a Spider-Punk design, so I bought it off of somebody who did actually design this suit, got the file and then uploaded it in to Print Costume and then did all my other measurements and attachments the way I wanted it to. So if you have a suit design that nobody seems to have, but you know where the pattern is, you can totally just buy it and then upload it somewhere else. Let me go over my notes, make sure I didn't miss anything. I think I got it all. All right, I think I got all of the options and all of the accessories that I did write down. Now, again, if I missed something, if I didn't get something correct, if I glossed over something and you want clarification, please just leave a comment if it's a question or concern and I'll totally try to get back to you. Again, I'm only human. There's probably something that I missed, but I'd be more than happy to get back to somebody to clarify something in the comments below. Hopefully I was able to help somebody when ordering a Spider-Man suit or to help kind of break down those options and explain what all of them mean because I get it. They're very overwhelming and I don't want somebody thinking that they need to have a certain option or that if they don't get one that their suit will be bad it doesn't matter and of course at the end of the day all of this stuff is up to personal preference again like i said i'm not here to tell you which options to get and which ones not to get i'm just here to explain what the options are and you're free to get whichever ones that you like that fit your preferences your wants your needs your budget whatever you know there's never a wrong option oh the crotch zipper i forgot that one all right so there's another zipper that people talk about a lot it's the crotch zipper it's essentially where it puts a zipper right here right at the crotch area it goes kind of like diagonally along the inner thigh i personally don't get this option and i've never actually seen this design in practice but that's where it is so th that's the explanation for the crotch zipper it's 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 right there wow that was like the worst option to forget to mention and then kind of spew in at the end anyway i've rambled on for long enough again thank you so much for watching i hope i was able to help somebody we're almost close to 30k on this page so if you want to subscribe please feel free that would be awesome Make sure to turn on notifications so that you don't miss any videos or community posts to be a part of those and participate with that. As well as going over to Instagram and giving that a follow because we're almost at 10K. And while you're over there, join the community and channels page because they always get behind the scenes stuff first. They get to vote and recommend different videos. And it's just fun to be a part of that stuff. Anyway, again, I've talked for long enough. I hope I was able to help. Peace and love. Do good things and I'll see everybody in the next one. Peace. Where's this yes, side? Spider -Man!